Okay, hello everyone. I, I found it interesting that after showing the micro shift, there will be IBM guy showing the enter large enterprises view. So I think that's that's kind of an interesting segue. So <coughs> this is about uh, how we as IBM came up with a interesting uh, development patterns to address large enterprises requirements for workload isolation using OpenShift Lifecycle Manager or OLM. I go. I, I hope that you guys know what OLM is or OpenShift Lifecycle Manager is. If not, there are plenty of Red Hat guys who can explain what it is. It's a it, it's a, uh, it's, it's a it's a specific way that, uh, which you can use to to deploy operators part of the operator framework. Uh, <coughs> few words about me. Uh, I'm IBMer, and that's that's it. What you need to know. Uh, I'm I come from IBM from Poland, not Holland, Poland. Uh, uh, developer advocate, and I'm responsible for IBM Cloudpax architecture. You'll hear in this talk Cloudpax, Cloudpax, Cloudpax. Karina mentioned Cloudpax; uh, she worked with Cloudpax. So let's let's deep dive into into the, the actual matter. So <coughs> I'll start with introducing the enterprise customer use cases of Cloudpax. But let's start first understanding what Cloudpax are. Uh, Cloudpax are IBM products running on Kubernetes, specifically on OpenShift, uh, or ra actually running on OpenShift. And uh, there are seven of them, and they are spe specifically developed and curated to be first-class citizens for on OpenShift platform. And <coughs> uh, they are grouped together collection of capabilities for for some logical uh, domain, whether you want you're interested in data analytics, machine learning, securing your infrastructure. Uh, uh, automating business processes or integrating different environments, that's, uh, that's what IBM Cloud Parks uh, are for. Uh, what's, in, what's in common is that they run on OpenShift uh, uh, container platform, they are 100% containerized, and they are using heavily OpenShift life cycle, uh, Operator Lifecycle Manager. Uh, uh, IBM invested heavily in making sure that uh, our applications are uh, deployed and managed by operators. We use heavily OLM, uh, <coughs> and uh, we are delivering over 200 operators, 250 or so last time I counted, uh, and this number is growing. Uh, and we also came up with a common architecture and, and patterns, how operators shall be developed and used to address, uh, not, only to be uh, not only to be deployed and, uh, by, by customers, but also address interesting tenancy and workload isolation scenarios that our customers are after. What, what those scenarios are? So <coughs> in earlier talks today, you showed even in the numbers, guys presenting that they are running really large clusters. Like, you know, it, it's not five node cluster. It's like 96, I think I, I, I saw. Uh, but uh, IBM customers are lar uh, running even larger, thousands nodes. And <coughs> believe it or not, they are not running only IBM software there. Uh, they're running other software, even though we like uh, we would like uh, them to run on IBM, but actually they're running uh, something more. And they are partitioning their clusters uh, into isolated uh, uh, areas managed by individual line of businesses. And cluster admins uh, make, uh, wants to make sure that clusters remain stable, secure, reliable, and operational whenever individual line of businesses are prov providing the horsepower of individual set of namespaces. And, <coughs> and there is a emerging pattern that our customers are running really huge those clusters. And uh, uh, cluster admins are simply saying, hey, line of business A, now you are provided those set of namespaces, go and deploy your application there. But ensure that your application uh, only lives within that namespace, right? Uh, cannot uh, reach anything outside of this namespace, cannot uh, uh, infer any other workloads happening in other namespaces. Now, whenever you want to upgrade application, application in, uh, in, in a single tenant namespace, it's only your business. You must not influence any other thing. Which, uh, <coughs> uh, and moreover, I, IBM cloud packs which are deployed in those individual namespaces are shipped on the independent schedule. So they are not uh, roll, rolled out to the to the customers at the same time, uh, a different schedule, and customers are also upgrading individual applications at different schedule. We don't we don't own that schedule, uh, <coughs> and because of some complexities, uh, how this setup can be can be deployed, it, it slowed down a bit 
adoption of uh, IBM, uh, uh, IBM Cloud Pack. So therefore, we came up with architectural patterns how we, we as IBM uh, are using operators now. Now, there is emerging wo work how to uh, re-architect OLM into OLM v1, uh, which is a great thing, uh, and we are interested to, 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 to look how it goes. However, we need to address uh, customer use cases now, not tomorrow, today. So, <coughs> so therefore, we came up with a uh, few patterns that we believe that in general makes, makes a lot of sense, so therefore we are sharing here. So first of all, <coughs> given that our applications, uh, cloud packs, must be running within the namespaces and must not infer with an, any other namespaces, must not have any cluster role. So <coughs> uh, I, I, I wrote remove or reduce. Some of the applications require access to nodes, which is cluster permission. Uh, uh, but in general, we really scrutinize any cluster permission, bit by bit, verb by verb, resource by resource. And we need to justify every single cluster role if there is any left. Uh, <coughs> uh, just not to mention that any wildcard permissions are no go at all. <coughs> Whenever there are some services which are common between, uh, uh, between multiple uh, instances of applications, we are calling them singletons, and we are iso isolating them and segregating, and actually we are saying that whenever tenant is deploying application, actually tenant asks cluster administrator to do some prep work, just like cluster admins are doing the storage setup, right? Uh, we are saying the same for set manager, OpenShift uh, 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 set manager will help uh, with that, uh, uh, or other services, so therefore all of the singleton services are being uh, extracted uh, and managed by cluster admins, not by tenant admins. <coughs> uh, we also address a scenario where namespaces for operators and operands are segregated. We see customers where they implement the firewall rules between namespaces and API server, so therefore only selected set of namespaces are allowed to interact with with, uh, with API server. So therefore, operators can interact with Kubernetes APIs, but operands, operands are the actual workloads, those which are doing the actual business, database, machine learning system, those are operands, but they have operators. Those operands must not talk with Kubernetes. They are absolutely prevented uh, from, from doing this. Uh, we are providing a, a open source uh, component which uh, which is conceptually very similar to what OLM v1 will come up as, as part of the ORIA operator, which manages permissions across multiple namespaces. Cloud packs are not deployed in a single namespace, but in a group of namespaces. So sometimes our topology spans multiple namespaces, and we need to have the permissions being projected in the individual namespaces. So therefore, we have operator, which is, which is, uh, which is doing this. But last but not least, something which, uh, which is very frequently forgotten is that uh, operators are shipped and, 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 and are delivered together with custom resource definition, CRDs. CRDs is the schema of the custom resource which actually operator acts upon, right? So we saw uh, earlier a few examples of CRDs. I think I saw one for, uh, what was that? Forgot. Anyway. <coughs> um, CRDs are cluster scoped. Whenever you deploy operator into a cluster and operator defines custom resource definition, it is seen across all of the namespaces. An interesting thing happens if you install two operators at different version, different versions in, uh, into two different namespaces, if those operators define different, CR, different custom resource definition schema, that interesting conflicts arises. And uh, in order to address this, again, now, not tomorrow, now without any vCluster technology, without any multi-tenant control planes, uh, we as IBM implement, implement a very strict regime for what, uh, how customer resource definitions are defined. They must be backwards and forwards compatible, which means that we allow customers to deploy to have different environments, different set of namespaces on the same cluster, one of them being dev instance, one of them being QA instance, at different versions, V1 and V2, of our uh, cloud pack capabilities, and they don't conflict with each other, even though custom resource definition is a, is a global, uh, global thing. Uh, 
it has an interesting side effect that we are using heavily uh, Kubernetes Preserve Unknown field, which is a specific marker on the uh, CRD Open API, which simply uh, means that Kubernetes will not prune any uh, field which are not ex explicitly described in the schema, uh, which effectively we are having a little bit of schema-less CRDs, which is kind of heartbreaking because CRDs were introduced to Kubernetes to enforce schema for custom resources. Uh, but given that cus uh, custom resource definitions are not uh, 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 tenant level, but they are cluster scoped, that's, that's the whole reason. It's a, it's a little bit of pain, but also with the very well-defined software development practices, you can ensure that your operators, even with schema-less CRDs, operate fine. <coughs> now, that's, that's what we have today. But tomorrow, in the future, uh, we want to uh, explore other options where clusters are really truly multi-tenant. Uh, we are exploring, uh, we are starting with uh, making sure that operator catalogs, catalog sources, are scoped to namespaces. They are not in OpenShift Marketplace, namespace on OpenShift, but they are in the individual tenant namespace. Uh, so therefore, whenever customer updates the definition of catalog source, updates are not pushed to our, towards all of the tenants, but only just to one, one tenant at a time. So therefore, we are avoid, avoiding manual plan approvals uh, <coughs> and, and complex setup like that. Uh, of course, we are uh, aware and, and collaborating on OLMv1. Uh, effort, uh, which is uh, a, a different architecture of operator lifecycle manager. And specifically, we are super interested and, and will collaborate on the migration pattern from existing OLM v0 into v1. So therefore, any customers, but also vendors, like per perhaps some of you guys are already implementing operators, uh, also can leverage from this work. So therefore, your technology, your operators can be migrated from existing OLM into OLM v1. Uh, that's 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 essential piece, and uh, in the at the same time there is a, a, a evolution of Kubernetes by itself and OpenShift as well uh, towards multi-tenant control planes. Uh, perhaps you may have seen in uh, earlier uh, OpenShift Commons gathering introduction of KCP, uh, which is also kind of interesting promise how certain problems of the multi-tenant world or clusters can be can be resolved. There are other technologies which are, which are pretty, pretty actively trying to solve the same problem, uh, but it's a journey. Uh, it's something which uh, we as IBM have realized that customers initially were running very small clusters, fine-tuned for the specific applications. They are running now large ones, multi-tenant ones, and technology needs to come, Kubernetes needs to come up with it, OLM needs to come up with it. And uh, we are addressing, uh, we are, and we will be documenting the development practices uh, 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 to the field, to the, to, the, to the general population, but also at the same time uh, actively exploring uh, uh, upstream uh, activities. <coughs> and I think that's it. Uh, it showed a different perspective. It's not Microsoft, but it's like a huge enterprises view. On, uh, on this ecosystem, but mm, I'm happy to, to take any, any questions from you guys.